And I just want to say hello to all of you who are watching this lesson and just say I think it's cool that you are working hard to improve your English. Um, this, let me check a few things here uh, to make sure that it is working. Um, usually for me, I have to check the audio. Sounds like the audio is working. Sounds like everything is working. Um, I have to admit that uh, a little earlier today, I started a live stream by accident because I was testing things. So if you could just let me know in the chat if everything sounds good. Um, I hope it does. I will check from time to time. Um, I am testing out a lot of new equipment. You can see that I'm not holding up paper today. So um, I have the lesson all set up uh, so that it can be displayed right there. Um, and I'm going to be trying something new with how I display questions today. So I really hope all of it goes well. If Todd or Dave could let me know how the audio is, uh, that would be great. I see in the chat, Aaron Nildo saying the audio is great and other people saying everything is great. So we should get started. Um, the office. So not everyone has an office job, but many people in the world work in an office. And that's how we refer to it. We say it's an office job. Even though I'm a teacher, it's kind of like an office job, definitely, because I'm in a place that has all of the things you would find um, if you were in an office. So um, I see Deke Shant saying, this is so cool, Bob. Yeah, so Deke Shant, I'm trying out a new light, a different camera, a different computer, different software, a different microphone. <laughs> I don't know if people could tell, but I'm nervous. I hope everything works really, really well. I'm sure it will. It looks like so far that things are working well, but we should start the lesson. So um, I'm just going to click this arrow and you'll see that it says office. So when you work in an office, you might actually have an office. Some people, when they go to work, they have a room. And when they go in that room, they're the only one that uses that room. And that room is called an office. But um, not everyone has that um, privilege, okay? Um, usually an office is for the boss or for a manager uh, or for someone else who is important. And the rest of the people end up working in places that we call cubicles. Um, let me just make this a little bit bigger for you. So a cubicle is a space where you don't have your own room. <laughs> you have a space that there's a couple walls around you and it forms what's called, you know, a cube. So a cube is like, um, well, I don't think I could explain what a cube is. Um, but if you are the boss, you get to have an office. If you are just a worker, you are probably in a cubicle. Um, and uh, I'm just, hopefully I don't flip too many things around here. Um, the other kind of workplace, if you work, if you have an office job, is you might work in an open concept workplace. Um, and you can see in this workplace that there are no walls at all. Everyone can see everyone. Um, I don't think I would like this kind of workplace. I think it would be a bit challenging for me uh, to work in a place where um, I could see everyone and hear everyone. I'm just going to do a quick audio check. Give me a sec. Uh, yes, it sounds great. So um, I forgot to go over the standard rules of the lesson. Please keep the chat over there, over there. <laughs> keep the chat in English. Use it to practice your English. If you have a question, either Todd or Dave will link the form. Please use the form to ask the questions. Uh, and uh, once again, if you are new here, don't forget to click that red subscribe button. I think it's right there on your screen um, if you are looking right there. So anyways, thanks. Um, I'm going to just jump over and do the first question right now. So um, hopefully this works as well. So Deke Shanch has the first question. Hello, teacher. Can you talk about some office stationery that you use in your school? So stationery generally refers to all the paper products that you use in an office. Um, interestingly enough, at our school, we only use basic photocopy paper. Because we live close to the United States, our paper is eight and a half by 11 inches. It's not metric, it's not in centimeters. Um, so that is our standard office stationery. Um, we don't use much else. Even um, 
Students sometimes used lined paper. They used lined paper in their binders. But as a teacher, I generally just use the photocopier paper or the printer paper. I know in most of the world it's called A4 paper, but in Canada we use 8.5 by 11. Um, let me just check for the next question here. Uh, again, this is all new for me, so please be um, uh, patient with me. Uh, and again, I'm only going to be look at question. I'm only going to be looking at questions that relate to the topic of office vocabulary uh, and phrases. Eugen from Kharkov. Hello, Mr. Bob. How are you doing? My question is, as a farmer, do you prefer working in the office or in the field or in the garden? Notice I corrected some things there. Maybe it depends on the season. Thanks so much. So after a long day of work at school, I do like working outside on the farm. I like having a balance between the two. Um, so I would say both. And yes, it does depend on the season. Um, most seasons, I really do like working outside, even in the winter. I like uh, using the snowblower in my driveway. But I also like being at school in the winter where it's nice and cozy and warm and I can get lots of work done. So thank you for that question. Um, let me just find one more question and then we will move on. So the next question. Oh, this is an interesting one. Uh, Alina says, Hi, Teacher Bob. Would you, give, would you agree with this statement? Office is all about survival of the fittest. It really depends on what company you work in. Um, so if you work in a company where, um, um, if you work in a company uh, where it's very competitive, if you work at an office where it's very competitive, then yes, it's survival of the fittest. But uh, generally, um, most workplaces, hopefully in the world, um, take care of their employees. Let's jump back to the lesson though. Um, if you uh, work in an office or a cubicle, or if you are at an open concept uh, place, you would work in an office building. Uh, you might recognize this picture from a lesson I did a long time ago on business. Um, so again, uh, just wanna keep you in the know. Please don't ask questions in the chat. I see a few questions popping up over there, but please use the form. I'll try to answer as many of them as possible. Um, if you have an office job, you will work at a desk. Obviously, you will have an office chair. The difference between a normal chair and an office chair is an office chair is adjustable. It can go up or down. It usually has armrests on it. It usually leans back or tilts. Well, this chair doesn't actually do that. <laughs> I should be careful. It usually tilts back and forward, uh, and it usually swivels or turns, okay? So notice... Um, if you have a normal chair, it just stays in one spot. An office chair usually has wheels on the bottom, so you can roll around if you need to. Um, and generally, yes, it tilts back and forth. I won't fall over. It swivels or turns. It has armrests for your arms to go on. Um, and it's usually adjustable. You can adjust the height and the comfort level as well. Just going to do one more audio check before I'm confident. Yes, I think everything's going to keep working. Um, so uh, you, I'm going to go through a whole bunch of things that you would have if you worked at an office. So you would probably have a stapler. Um, a stapler is used to staple pieces of paper together. So you have a stapler. You staple page, pages together. You put staples in the stapler. Uh, and then don't hurt your finger. One time I stapled my finger and that really hurt. So don't do that. That's not very, uh, very good thing to do. You will probably have a hole punch and the top one here, um, there, I can point, good. The top one is a hole punch. The bottom one is more common. It is a three hole punch um, so that you can put three holes in the piece of paper. Uh, swivel is a great verb, says Brent from American English with this guy, it's fun to say. Yeah, it's fun to have a chair that swivels um, for sure. Um, you'll probably have lots of paper clips. So a staple is very permanent, but a paper clip is something temporary to hold a bunch of pieces of paper together. Um, and you'll probably have some sort of organizer or desk organizer. Uh, Lolly Lolly says, be careful, Bob, don't fall down. Yeah, I hope I don't fall down this morning. That wouldn't be very good. Um, so what you see on the screen right now over here is a desk organizer. Um, it's where you can put all of your stuff on your desk. You'll probably have a calculator. Um, even though computers are great 
for adding up and multiplying and dividing and subtracting numbers, sometimes a calculator is still very handy. It's very nice to have a calculator. Um, you'll probably have a phone charger. Um, this is something new in the last 10 or 15 years, but most people at their desk at work also charge their phone. Uh, Madi in the chat says, stapler is so dangerous sometimes. Yes, definitely. Um, and you might have a plant. Um, so you can see I put the word house plant underneath. Um, I got to get better at pointing, don't I? Um, a plant at work in a pot is just called a plant. But if you had the same plant in your house, you could call it a house plant. Um, so let me go and see if there are more questions. Yes, there are many questions. Um, let's see. Next question from Vitaly Smirnov. Hello, Teacher Bob. How are you doing there? I'm doing well, Vitaly. Thank you so much for asking. Have you ever worked in an office? Do you consider it boring? So notice I added in an office there. I think it depends on what you have to do. I worked at an office when I was in university, um, but I was it was an audio visual department. So it was an office, but I also got to go out and help professors with uh, audio visual equipment. So I did like that job. It was a lot of fun. Um, but so I wouldn't consider it boring. I think it could be quite exciting actually to have an office job. Uh, let me find the next question here. Let's see. There's a few questions here that aren't uh, on topic. Um, so I, I am going to skip those. Ruslan has the next question. Hello, dear teacher Bob. Best wishes. Could you explain how to say correctly? So I'm going to make a little correction here, Ruslan. Dear teacher Bob, best wishes. Could you explain how to talk correctly about gathering with colleagues to discuss something, um, conducting a meeting or gathering a meeting. Um, so how to say correctly. So if you need to meet with someone, you just say that you need to meet with them. So at my work, which is kind of like an office job, I would say, hey, do you guys have time to meet after school? Um, do, you have, do you have time to meet at one? Can we have a meeting at one to talk about the new project? Um, do you guys have a few minutes after lunch? because I wouldn't mind having a meeting with you. So Ruslan, I hope that uh, I hope that helps. I hope that uh, was an okay answer to your question. Um, so the next one is from uh, Ahmad. Hi, our beloved teacher. Today, I do not have any questions. I just want to say thank you for your lessons. You're welcome, Ahmad. Very, you are very welcome. Um, let's see here. Oh, <laughs> this one. Uh, oh, let me click here. Ario, hola, Mr. Bob. No question today, but Mr. Sean has uploaded a, was, has uploaded a new video. So head over to Free99 English. Uh, it sounds like Sean has a new video up there today. And let me get to the next question. Um, so we don't use this term. So Mary the Iranian. Hi, dear teacher. Please explain the difference between in-tray and out-tray. Thanks in advance. So... Um, in Canada, we say inbox and outbox. And sometimes when you have an office job where um, you need to have you need to work with do a lot of paperwork, sometimes you have a box on your desk where the papers go in that you need to work on. And then when you are done doing what you need to do, they go in the outbox. So we don't use that term. It might be totally common in Britain. I'm not sure. But in Canada, we would say inbox and outbox. Uh, let me find one more question here and we'll get back to the lesson. Um, next question is from Henry from Taiwan. Hi, teacher Bob. Hi, Henry. Um, is there any, are there any famous or known stationery stores still in business in Canada? Thank you. Yes, Staples. So I know we had the word, uh, let me find it back for a sec. Um, so we're on plant. We had stapler and we have a store called Staples where you can go and you can buy um, many things that you need for your office. So thanks, Henry, for that question. Um, and let's get back to the lesson. Uh, thanks, Delson, for the uh, super chat. Uh, or thank you for becoming a member, Delson. Sorry. Um, sometimes I get confused between what I'm seeing there. So again, whoever, when you see names in green over there, over there, over there, <laughs> those are members of my channel. Uh, and I appreciate um, when you become a member, you help support me. And if you like how this live stream is going it's because of the generous support of my members um, they allowed me to purchase things like a new light and to use different software and to kind of uh, up my game that's an english term um, i used to hold up paper now i have it on the screen um, so i've upped my game so thank you so much but let's keep going you'll probably have a pen 
a pencil, and a bunch of erasers. Even though we do almost everything on computers now, if you get an office job, you will most likely be working on a computer a lot. Um, but you will also still need a pen and a pencil and an eraser still because it's just quite common um, when you work in an office that you need to do that. Sorry, I'm just going to check. I won't normally check the audio this often, but uh, today I'm just extra um, concerned that things are working right. You will probably have a pencil sharpener. And now here's the difficulty. I can't really point very well, can I? Because my hand goes behind. But the far pencil sharpener is a normal one. And the one closer to me is um, basically an electric pencil sharpener. Because maybe it's too hard. Maybe you don't have enough strength to turn the pencil. You can just stick it in. Um, you'll probably have a pair of scissors. Um, you will probably have post-it notes. So post-it notes uh, come on a little pad. And when you write on a post-it note, you can tear it off the pad. And then you can stick it on the wall or on your desk or on a box. Um, post-it notes, um, we also call them sticky notes. Because I think post-it note is the actual brand name of the company that makes them. Alina says, everything is working perfectly, Teacher Bob. Thanks, Alina, for letting me know that. Um, let's see here. Uh, you become a member and Teacher Bob stops printing stuff. That's what Vitaly says. Yeah, so I stopped printing stuff because people became members. Um, Post-it notes are cool if you're learning English because one way that you can learn vocabulary is you can write the English word on a post-it note and then stick it on that thing. So... If you were sitting where I am and you were learning English, you could say camera and put a post-it note on it. Microphone, post-it note. Computer monitor, post-it note. Laptop, post-it note. Uh, headphones, post-it note. And so post-it notes are very, very cool that way. Um, thanks VIP IDP for becoming a member. That's very awesome of you. Uh, thank you for joining this live stream. By the way, one thing I'm happy about with this live stream is I feel like the colors are correct now. Um, because my eyes are actually like blue green but sometimes they look gray when I do it the other way so I'm happy that you can see the right color um so you will probably have tape in Canada when the tape is clear and when it looks like that kind of tape we call it scotch tape um, you don't have to buy it from the scotch company um, but we call it scotch tape and that tape is actually in a tape dispenser okay uh, Elias says hello professor Bob hello everyone while programming here, I leave the other browser tab open to listen to your class. Very awesome. Thank you, Professor Bob. You are very welcome. Um, hey, I'm going to just uh, pop over and uh, answer a few more questions. Let's see here. Um, a few of the questions are not on topic, but so I won't be answering them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Brent from the U.S. Hi, Brent. So Brent is uh, Learn American English with this guy over in the chat. Um, you should visit his channel from time to time. He has great stuff as well. Uh, your new stream looks great. Thanks, Brent. Uh, do you like the TV show The Office? Who is your favorite character? Um, I don't really have a favorite character, but I do like The Office. It is a really funny television show. If you want to watch a show to learn English, um, I don't necessarily recommend The Office because a lot of the humor is hard for non uh, it's hard for people to understand sometimes. It is funny, though, if you watch The Office and you understand the humor. That would be a good test of your English. But, um, yeah, thanks, Brent. Um, I would say Dwight's my favorite character, even though he is the strangest character. Um, just one second here. I'm clicking too many things at once. Um, oh, here's a good question. Yeah, so this is from... Just give me a sec here. i got to fix the... Uh, so I've clicked... Yes, I've really messed it up now, haven't I? Oh, well. So the question is, what is the difference between work from home and work at home? So the difference between um, work from home and work at home, there is no difference. So you can be a someone who works from home or you can be someone who works at home. I guess there is a slight difference because um, if you work from home, you probably work for someone else. If you work at home, you probably work for yourself, okay? See the difference there? So right now, I work from home. I have a job out of school, but I work from home. Jen 
grows flowers here. So she works at home because she has her own business. Um, let me just check to make sure. Um, not sure why the question thing got a little messed up. Oh yes, it got messed up. So I got to figure out uh, exactly why it got messed up. That's a little strange. Let me just see um, if I can fix that for a sec. I think I can fix it. I have the technology. So let's see here. Oh, that's too bad because it was working really well. Let me just uh, put this over here. I'll figure it out at some point. I think I'm going to go back to Brent's question and then see. Oh yeah, see that worked. Okay, well anyways, we'll go back to the actual lesson and we'll figure out if I can get the questions uh, working a little bit better in a moment. Um, no sense dwelling on it. We were on tape. You will probably have file folders um, because they said a long time ago that computers and um, the technology we have would make us use less paper. And that has not been true. In my opinion, we use just as much paper now. Um, I use less paper starting today, but we've created a world where it's very easy to print out things. So it's very easy to have a lot of paper. And in order to organize the paper, you would like, you can put it into file folders. Um, if you need to mail something, you would put it in an envelope or an envelope. Notice I say it two different ways. Whatever flavor of English you are learning, you'll want to look that up, okay? So if I need to mail something, I put it in an envelope, but I might also say that I put it in an envelope. Um, in Canada, both pronunciations are correct, um, but if you're learning British English or American English, uh, you would need to figure out um, the right one. And then you would put a stamp on it and you would throw it in the mail or put it in the mail um, or mail it, okay? A lot of different ways to talk about. Um, you might have a clipboard. So you might print out something on paper and then you might put it on the clipboard so you can walk around. If you are a supervisor at a place, um, you might use a clipboard um, because you might walk around to see how workers are doing and then you might check off on the clipboard that they're doing a good job or a bad job. Um, uh, teachers use clipboards quite a bit, actually. Um, and then you pro will probably have a wastebasket. I'm not sure why in this picture the person threw out their clipboard, but you will probably have a small wastebasket. Um, and then what's new in the last um, probably 20 years is you will have a recycle bin. So you will recycle your paper. So you'll see paper in this wastebasket. That's not allowed at my work. We need to recycle it. Um, Brent says, in English, we say to make an omelet, you need to break a few eggs. If teacher Bob didn't take the risk for a better live lesson, he wouldn't grow. Better technology, smoother chat. I love it. Yes, I'm glad things are going good. You will have a phone. So even though we live in a world where everyone has a phone, at work, if you work in an office, you will have an office phone. You will have an office phone because it's more than just a phone. So you can pick up the office phone and dial the, a number and call someone. But you can also pick up the office phone and dial an extension and talk to someone in the same building, okay? So if you know that tech support is extension 28, you can pick up the phone and hit 28, and then the person at your office building who takes care of computers would answer the phone. Um, so you will definitely have an office phone. It also works in some businesses as an intercom. So you can pick up the phone and dial star something star 30 and then when you talk the whole workplace hears your voice from their phones and from speakers in the ceiling so uh, you will have a work phone you'll probably have a notepad or a notebook um, something that you can use uh, to take notes so you might need to go to a meeting and at the meeting maybe instead of bringing your laptop you bring a notepad or a notebook and you take notes during the meeting Definitely when you go to a class, you will probably, uh, if you were a student, you would have a notebook to take notes as well. Um, and you'll probably have a day planner. In Canada, we also call this an agenda. So a notebook is just a place to take notes, um, but a day planner or agenda uh, is somewhere where you can, where it's, it has the days and the months of the year and you can say, okay, next week, Wednesday, meeting with Joe, okay? 
next week, Friday, meeting with Todd and Dave. So that's what you can use a day planner for. Um, and an agenda can also be the list of things you're going to talk about in a meeting. But in Canada, we also call the book an agenda. And you'll have a computer. Obviously, you will have a computer. You will have a keyboard and mouse and probably a mouse pad. If you don't know what a mouse pad is, it looks like this. It's something you put your mouse on um, so that your mouse works a little bit better. And you will have a computer monitor or you might have a laptop. Sorry, I went a little quick there. You'll have a monitor or you might have a laptop. We're going to try the questions again. Let's see here. Uh, let's see if it works. Yes. So I know what's wrong now. Niranjan says, hi, Sir Bob. I hope you are doing well. My question is, what is the meaning of ahead of the curve? Thank you. So when your company or your business is cutting edge or ahead of the curve, um, it means that they are um, more advanced than other companies that are doing the same thing. Okay. So if you have um, a business that has the latest technology and it has the best things, you would say that they are ahead of the curve. That means that there are other companies that don't have the same technology and aren't doing things as well. So if you are a cutting edge company or if you are ahead of the curve, it means you're doing really, really well as a company. Uh, let me get to the next question. Um, let's see here. Oh, this is a good question. Yes. So Balut says, hi, Bob. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Balut. Uh, I hope you are having a fantastic day. Little correction there so far. I would like to know what kind of dress code is good for the office. Thanks. It depends on your office. So my office requires men to wear a shirt with a collar uh, and it re does not require a tie. Okay. My workplace requires a shirt with a collar. I may not wear jeans to work. I need to wear dress pants or khakis or cargo pants are fine, but I must have a shirt with a collar. Um, so it really depends on your office. You might have uh, an office place where the boss is very relaxed and you can wear jeans and a t-shirt. That's totally fine. Um, you might have um, an office job where the boss wants everyone to wear a suit and tie to be clean cut. That means to shave. Um, they might have different requirements for men and women in terms of what they wear to work. Um, but generally in Canada, an office environment will be either um, business casual or casual. It's rare in Canada, unless you're a high end banker or something, it's rare in Canada for you to be required to wear a suit and tie to work. Um, let me find one more question. Um, oh, I'm going to answer a question from the chat. Julie, I think it's Julio or Julio Pinero. Professor Bob, what's the correct pronunciation of mobile phone? So you can say mobile phone in Canada. Or you can say mobile phone. You can say both. Two pronunciations. Let's see here. Um, let's see. I'm looking for the next question that is on topic. So I don't know if there is another one. Um, sorry to slow down a bit here. Here we go. Here's the next question. Rod says, what kinds of offices are most common in Canada to work in the recent years? Do you think there will be lots of changes after this pandemic? So I think the most common offices are what we would call head office. So you have a company that sells cars and they will have head office, which is the office that is in charge of all the different places that sell cars. Um, so I think that's the most common. And I do think offices are going to change after this. I think you'll see um, less open concept and more cubicles. And I'll think, I think you'll see a lot of social distancing requirements at offices for sure. Um, so just give me a one moment here. I have to make a small change to the stream. Um, at this point in the stream, I usually switch the chat. You should see this chat switch in a moment. Um, the chat should switch now to members only mode. Um, so I do this for about 10 minutes during every live lesson just to thank all of my members. So my members are the people whose names you see in green in the chat. They have a little crown by their name. Um, some of them have been members for more than two or three months. So thank you for that. Um, if you are a member, you give me a little bit of money and it helps me do what I need to do to run this channel. So I appreciate my members. They get a little bit of time during the live stream 
uh, to ask a few questions. So if you are a member, you may ask questions in the chat. I will continue right now with the lesson. So you'll probably have a calendar on your desk, a desk calendar. So a desk calendar takes many forms. It might be something as simple as a calendar where you can just flip the pages and it stands up nicely on your desk. Or it might look like that one where it's made out of little wooden blocks. Um, let's see here. American English said, oh, American English is talking to Panthera. That's good. Um, let's see. American English with this guy should have a video together with Mr. Bob. It would be great. I am working towards being able to collaborate more. So that's part of the reason why I'm trying out new software. So we'll see. American English Brent says, the crown feels good. Thanks, Brent. Uh, Samuel, great to see you, Mr. Bob. Live color is more vibrant today. Do you remember the floppy disk decades ago? Yes, I remember having to carry floppy disks around with me, the big ones and then the little ones. For sure, Samuel. That was pretty funny. Uh, let's see. Cow, hello from Brazil, Bob. Here in Brazil, people use the term, I'm doing home office when they are working from home due to the quarantine. This is usual here in Brazil. So many people in Canada and the United States will have a home office. It's a common room to have in a home. And it's the place where you usually have a computer and you pay the bills. Um, if you run a business from home, you definitely will have a home office for sure. Um, and then also I'm working from home now. If I say this to a native English speaker, I'm doing homework. Will they understand that I'm working in my usual work? No, they will think that you are in school and that the teacher has given you homework. So the word homework in English always refers to work that you are doing for school that was assigned by the teacher. So you would just say, I'm working from home. That's what I would say. Um, I am going to sort through here. Panthera Nori is talking to Brent, having a great conversation. Madi says, I need another crowd. Uh, let's see here. Um, Sam the Taiwanese. Hi, teacher. Some bosses don't like to have office romances in their workplaces in our country. They are afraid that workers would be distracted at their work. Do you have the same situation in Canada? It depends on where you work. Um, there are some workplaces where if you start to date someone at work, you actually need to tell the boss or you need to tell human resources. I don't think any workplace can forbid it completely. But you do, I think, in some workplaces have to uh, do that. Uh, let's see here. Lolly, lolly. Bonjour, Bob. No questions right now. Tomorrow I'll ask some questions. Merci et bonne journée. Thanks, Lolly. Uh, Alina, Teacher Bob, show the ropes. Could you please explain what does it mean exactly um, when we talk about an office? So if you start a new job, whether it's an office job or a different kind of job, someone will show you the ropes. So basically what they will do is they will explain to you how the job works and they will teach you how to do things at that job so they will basically be showing you the ropes um let's see here let me sort through um panthera nori that sounded awesome maybe some videos together i hope so i my internet's not perfect for that though i did some testing earlier this week with sean from free 99 and it went pretty good but we have to keep working on it Let's see here. Melody, nice to see you again, Teacher Bob. Uh, VIP says they are an English addict. Vitaly, as I work in an office building, I can see what happens, at least in Russia. More than half of stuff are still at home. More than half of staff are still at home, and our renters are asking for a sale. Yeah. I don't know what offices will look like, Vitaly. We'll have to see. Um, smart working is the Italian term for working from home during the virus. Words in English, not Italian. So that's from Brent from American English. Very cool. Thank you, Mr. Bob from Kyo. Bernadette says, do you use the word telework? No. So we telecommute. We don't say telework. And telecommute is not as popular anymore. When you telecommute, it means that instead of driving your car to work, you just use your computer. So you telecommute. Uh, let's see here. Um, Panthera has no questions. No problem, Panthera Nori. Um, let's see here. Okay, let's get back to the lesson. I'm going to keep uh, moving here, just checking the time. You will probably have a desk lamp on your desk. Even though an office building will have lots of light, you might want to have a desk lamp because maybe you're working late. So if you stay after the time when you normally go home, you would say you're working late. And maybe the lights in the building start to go off. You might want to have a desk lamp so that you can keep working. Oh, Panthera Nori. Let's see. Oh, Elias is 
doing code. Uh, he's doing a Java printout and saying, hi, Professor Bob, I really like your classes. Well, thanks, Elias. Panthera says, teacher Bob, I've read this in a book about working successfully. Find our niche in the marketplace. What could this mean? Thank you. So your niche is the area, if you are selling something, you might want to sell to the whole world. You might want to sell to just the people in your neighborhood. Um, you might want to sell to a sm people at a small market. Your niche is when you find the, the place and the type of customer that you want. Jen sells flowers at a farmer's market. She could sell flowers to people on the internet. She could sell flowers to people in stores, but her niche, the, the place she likes to do business is at a farmer's market. So there you go. Um, let me see here. I'm gonna keep going through the uh, lesson. I know there's more questions in the chat. Um, why don't you guys keep chatting? I'm gonna flip the chat back in a little bit. You will probably have a briefcase. I don't have a briefcase. I actually use a backpack when I go to work. Um, even though I'm older, I like a backpack better. It's easier to carry things. Um, so you will probably, because we keep printing things, there will probably be a file cabinet or a filing cabinet. We use both words in Canada. Um, I think filing cabinet is British, file cabinet is American, but you will need to check this to be sure. Um, there will probably be a photocopier or what we call a copy machine. Um, and then sometimes this is where people talk at work. So sometimes people have conversations around the photocopier. People used to and still do have conversations around the water cooler. Often in North America, a, a business, an office business, I don't have a picture of this, will have a water cooler where you can go and get some cold water. And people sometimes talk around the water cooler, but it's actually more common, I think, now to talk around the photocopier. It's definitely a gathering place um, where people talk. Um, let's see. Alina says, working in the office might be difficult because of gossiping. Some colleagues tend to gossip. Yes, and they do it around the photocopier or the water cooler for sure. Um, I'm going to flip the chat back. Just give me a sec here to do that. Uh, thank you to my members again. I know that was a short members only chat today, but I want to flip it back uh, because I want to kind of speed up a bit um, to get through the lesson. I can't remember how many more slides I have. I think it's only uh, a few, but let me uh, let me go one more. So you will probably have a printer. Again, even though we are trying to create a world where there is less paper, um, we still tend to print things uh, quite a bit. Uh, and then let me check the next one. This is a really old machine that we don't really use very often anymore and it's called a fax machine. But we still have one at work um, because sometimes you want to put a piece of paper in the fax machine and you want to dial the number and you want to fax something to someone. Um, the, the full name is facsimile machine. We never say that. Most English speakers don't even know that word. Uh, but a fax machine is something that you use if you have a piece of paper and you want someone far away to have the same piece of paper, you can send it through a fax machine. Right now, you are more likely to scan the document and send it as an attachment with an email, okay? So when you scan a document, you put it into a photocopier and you click scan instead of copy, and then you get a digital copy of the document that you can send in an email as an attachment. Um, let me uh, jump over to the questions for a sec. I know there's a few more to go here. Uh, next question is from Sergio Neri. Hi, Bob. How are you working with computers at home and using less paper? All of these objects are necessary. What do you think? Yes. So for a long time, I used paper for this lesson, and I think I'm done now. I think this worked today, um, and I felt bad, but you should know that in Canada, we do recycle all our paper. So all the paper that I used, I would flip over and I would print on the other side when I needed to. And once I had used it twice, I would then recycle it. So, um, but uh, yes, I do think it's necessary. I think that with all of the technology we have, there's really no need uh, for us to be wasting paper. So that's what you would say, wasting paper. Um, let's get to the next question. Lee from Japan. Hi, teacher Bob. I would like to know the difference, little correction there, Lee, difference between casual wear and smart casual. So if you watch my lesson on clothing, 
Um, I'm not the best person uh, to uh, to know uh, a lot about fashion. Um, so I think casual and smart casual, you will need to look that up. Um, I will help you learn English, but I'm not very good at fashion advice. What I do know is that I usually have, this is work casual or dress casual. That's what we would call it. Um, but generally, I, I'm not a fashion expert. So sorry, Lee, about that. Uh, hopefully you could get some good advice from another place online. Um, let's see. Next question is not about uh, offices, but it is about school. So me says, hello, teacher Bob. In the present day, how do you teach your students? I use my computer right there. Um, and I use this setup as well to have Zoom meetings uh, or Google Meets. Um, so we have digital school. We have class online. That's basically um, how we do it. Um, let me flip back here. I'm going to go back to the beginning. We're actually done with the slides. Um, so if you do have a question, uh, please put the question uh, into, wait, I might have, uh, let me, yeah, here we go, Vera. So I'm just going to take a few more questions uh, and then the lesson will be done. Vera says, hello, Bob, thanks for your job. Could you make the question words bigger? They are too tiny. They are tiny, aren't they? Yes, I should figure out how to make them a lot bigger. That would be a great idea. Um, I think I can make it somewhat bigger, but it just kind of messes things up if I try to do that right now. I shouldn't touch things on the fly, but I, for next week, will try to figure out a way uh, to make those bigger. I know I can make me bigger, but that's way too big, isn't it? <laughs> so I haven't been using that, uh, that setting at all. Uh, let me look for another question here. Um, next question is from Ruslan. Hi, Bob. The copier machine is not called Xerox. We call it a Xerox as a brand. So Xerox is a company um, that makes photocopiers and makes printers and it is an English word like we used to we don't say it as much anymore in Canada but you would say hey I need to make a Xerox or I need to Xerox something um, but we don't say that as much anymore we usually say I need to make a copy I need to copy something that's how um, that's how we would do it so Vitaly um, the lessons are becoming shorter, uh, but they used to only be 45 minutes. They became longer when I started teaching from home. Uh, but I promise you that in the future, I will uh, bump them back up again and make them a little bit longer. Uh, let me just see here. I am at the end of the questions, everybody. So that is the lesson for today. Um, you can stick around, though. I will just take a few questions from the chat for the next couple minutes, and then we will wrap this up. Uh, Kyo Ferrari, what software are you using to do this live? I'm using Streamlabs OBS to do this. Um, and let's see here. Um, next question. Hi, Teacher Bob. Isn't able to read here all the questions. You can ask. Oh, yes. Penthara Nori, I do appreciate that you help everyone uh, in the chat. That is very, very nice of you. Um, I just want to check something here. So, no, we're good. Anyways, folks, I think that we should just wrap this up. I think that it is a little bit of a shorter lesson today. Usually I go around 45 to 50 minutes, sometimes 55. Um, tomorrow I will be having another live stream. Do remember that tomorrow this video will be available with English subtitles. They're auto-generated, so they're not perfect, um, but it will help some of you if there are parts you didn't understand. Uh, please come back and watch it again. I will be doing a live lesson. Um, I will be doing a live lesson tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I did make a video this past Tuesday. You can go watch it. You might be able to get some English lessons with me if you win the competition. Wait, giveaway. It's a giveaway. I have to call it a giveaway. Um, I do want to thank all of my members once again. Uh, for helping to support me. You guys are awesome. It helps me do a really good job teaching English online. Um, I'm going to put this back up so people can tell what the lesson was about. Um, and uh, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. If you subscribe, you get a notification. I think there's a bell you can click and you get an extra notification uh, whenever I make a new lesson. So if you're interested in that, that would be great. Anyways, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to now figure out how to stop the live stream. Um, I'm pretty sure I know how to stop.